something incredibly frustrating keeps happening, and that is the polling leading up to the 2020 election. So we have Quinnipiac who puts out polls every once in a while, and everyone goes wild for the results and accepts them as gospel. And by everyone, I mean in particular newspapers like the New York Times, The Hill, everyone. <laughs> um, I'm laughing because it's so terrible and so unethical what they do and how they do the polling. So I'll explain a little bit. Back in college, you know, you learn something called lying with statistics. And what you learn is that anyone can make anything look true. Just because there's data doesn't mean that data is accurate. And in the case of these polls, and in particular this Quinnipiac poll we're going to go over today, the outcome was determined before they even did the polling. By that I mean the design of the poll was meant to get Joe Biden as a result, as the top candidate. And before I get ahead of myself, that's what happened. They had a poll about Biden, Kamala Harris, Bernie Sanders, Beto O'Rourke, the top contenders for 2020 in the Democratic race. And um, <laughs> the answer was Biden, and it was going to be Biden from the start. Um, I am surprised that they didn't ha have Kamala Harris come out a little bit further on top, but you know, you win some, you lose some. You don't want to be too obvious in these polling, <laughs> in the polling industry. And I think it'll be best explained when we actually look at the poll. But first, I want to show you one of these articles that the uh, that dive right in. These these uh, companies like USA Today dive right in, grab the poll, write up a story, put up a great headline, all that stuff. So the USA Today article is titled, Joe Biden leads Bernie Sanders, Beto O'Rourke, Kamala Harris, and latest Quinnipiac poll. And most people will only read the headline, unfortunately. And they'll say, okay, Joe Biden, what, he seems like an okay candidate or a great candidate, depending on the person's age. And I don't mean that in an ageist way. That's just what happens is uh, older people who are polled um, like Joe Biden and younger people who are polled like Bernie Sanders. Uh, again, I know that it's ironic that I'm saying polls show <laughs> for that data, but that, that generally does seem to be the case and um, plays out in reality. Let's close good old Trump there. Okay, the article says, Democrats favor former Vice President Joe Biden over his possible 2020 primary rivals in the latest Quinnipiac University national poll. The poll found 29% of Democrats and voters leaning Democratic would favor Biden if the Democratic primary were held today. Biden has not yet announced his candidacy, but has hinted at a possible 2020 run. Again, and I want to emphasize this, he hasn't even announced his candidacy, but the powers that be want you to think that Biden is the front runner. They want you to give up on Sanders or Warren or whoever it is that you're rooting for. And then there's the others that they don't even talk about, like Marianne Williamson and Tulsi Gabbard. And we have those interviews up on our channel as well. Biden bested Vermont independent Senator Bernie Sanders by 10 percentage points. Here's how the rest of the field fared. Biden at 29%, Sanders at 19%, former Rep Beto O'Rourke at 12%, Senator Kamala Harris at 8%, Senator Elizabeth Warren at 4%, Mayor Pete Buttigieg 4%, who knows if I said that right? <laughs> Senator Cory Booker, 2%, and Senator Amy Klobuchar, 2%. The poll, which surveyed nearly 1,400 voters from March 21st to 25th, also asked about President Donald Trump. And they do say that um, <laughs> Trump is not going to, like, they're trying to imply that Trump's not going to be arrested. So 53% of overall voters say they would definitely not vote for Trump in 2020. And 30% say they definitely would vote for him. So you have to think about the people who were polled. So if I um, interview or ask questions of more GOP voters than I do Democrats, I'm going to get Trump as the answer, as the winner. If I survey more young Democrats, I'm going to get Bernie Sanders as the top of the poll. If I survey more older voters, older white voters in particular, I'm going to get Joe Biden as my answer. So the methodology really, really, really matters. 
And they also list other takeaways from the poll, um, AOC's results and uh, popular vote versus electoral college. So if you're interested in that, I can pop the link in the chat. So there's a lot going on here. As I said, these polls get the result that they want to get. And I don't mean to sound like a conspiracy theorist, that's just how it works. And I think it's despicable. I also think it's important to look at the raw data, the raw polling data, because you can really get a feel for exactly what's going on when you see the questions that were asked, uh, the methodology they use specifically, because it's different for each poll. And actually, in the Quinnipiac poll, they didn't even list the ages uh, in their methodology of who they sample, you know, who was in their sample. So Status Quo has reached out to the polling powers that be. And we have yet to hear back about that age breakdown because it really, really, really matters. So let's go ahead and we'll look at the Quinnipiac poll. Here's that good old Quinnipiac poll. And even the poll itself, so I kind of think polls should be neutral or appear neutral. They shouldn't have headlines like this Quinnipiac poll has. And it says, Biden is on top of Democratic presidential pack. Quinnipiac University national poll finds. Most voters say they definitely won't vote for Trump. So they could argue, oh, we're just putting up the, you know, the results. That's all our headline is. But it's designed to get a result that they want. They could have said um, Biden and Sanders are on top of the Democratic presidential pack. They could have said um, Amy Klobuchar trailing behind. You know, you can pull out anything you want from a poll, anything you want from the results, and get the kind of headline that you want. And that, again, is what people take away. And I think it is so dangerous, the second part of their headline, where it says most voters say they definitely won't vote for Trump. That is so dangerous. We shouldn't be sleeping on this. We shouldn't, like last time, say, oh, Trump will never win. Ha 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 ha. Because Trump did win. And we can't say that most voters say they won't vote for Trump. That's not the case at all. It's, it's scary. And it sets a dangerous precedent for how polls and headlines and things are going to evolve or not evolve through the end of the, uh, presidential primary and then the general election excuse me not the primary because trump's already won won that one so in the general election so getting into the poll itself it says in an early look at the 2020 democratic presidential primary former vice president joseph biden is the choice of 29 percent of democrats and voters leaning democratic with 19 percent for u.s senator bernie sanders of vermont and 12 percent for former u.s representative beto o'rourke of texas what a bland guy who stands on things and has a weird voice <laughs> according to a quinnipiac university national poll released today U.S. Senator Kamala Harris of California has 8% of Democrats and Democratic leaners. The independent Quinnipiac University National Poll finds no other Democratic contender gets more than 4%. Democrats and Democratic leaners say 70 to 27% that age is, excuse me, Democrats and Democratic leaners say 70 to 27% that age is not an important factor in their vote. Looking at other possible factors, these voters say, I don't understand how this was written actually. <laughs> um, political ideology is an important factor, bipartisanship. I'm going to assume 72% yes and 21% no. And I'm sure it's down lower in the poll as well written correctly because the way they did this is weird. Anyway, 72% believe that political ideology is an important factor. 67% believe that bipartisanship is an important factor. 71% uh, believe that standing up to Republicans is important. 76% uh, that electability is important. 87% that sharing their views is important. 84%, including 75% among black voters, that race is not an important factor. Well, imagine that. 
84% of white people saying race is not an important factor. Of course they would say that. It's easy to say that. Unfortunately, we live in a very racist country, even among Democrats who will say they aren't racist, but are whitely privileged and racist every single day of their lives. And finally, 84% uh, including 83% among women, believe that gender is not important. Of course, it's easy for Democrats to say that, but there is something to it, you know? Women are not treated the same as men. That's just a fact. People believe that it is more important that a presidential candidate be a great leader. 55% of all voters say, while 36% say it's more important for a candidate to have great policy ideas. Hungry for a candidate to take on President Donald Trump, Democrats and Democratic leaners put the three Bs, Biden, Bernie, and Beto, at the top in a race where age, race, and gender take a backseat to electability and shared views, said Tim Malloy, assistant director of the Quinnipiac University poll. The three Bs in, an, in a race where age, race, and gender don't matter. That's completely bananas. It's, people say that, it's not true. Um, these polls just can't be trusted in, for a variety of reasons. Republicans and Republican leaners remain loyal to President Donald Trump, not a surprise, with 56% saying they do not want to see someone run against him in a Republican primary. And I seriously doubt that that would happen. I don't think anyone's gonna run against Trump. I could be wrong, but He's, you know, the GOP wants to win, bottom line, and they don't care if Trump blows up the country or the world. They just want to win. So I don't think they'll primary him. Maybe someone will try, but it won't really go anywhere. And then 53% of American voters say they definitely will not vote for Trump in the 2020 general election if he is a Republican candidate. Again, that's kind of scary because it should be way higher. But it's not, and we really need to pay attention to that. And if you'll remember, it was either this uh, polling data or the article, they were, t they were saying, you know, most voters wouldn't vote for Trump. Well, that's true, but only by 3% and only in your screwed up poll. So you really can't trust that. The loyal base stays its course, but 53% of all American voters say they've had enough and will not vote for President Trump, Malloy said. There are wide party gender and racial gaps as American voters support 44% the direct election of the president by popular vote rather than through the electoral college. So that's 54%. And I obviously think that we should go by popular vote. It makes the most sense. Yes, that means Hillary would have won. Gosh, that would have been light years better than Trump winning. That's for sure. And the popular vote is often wildly different than the Electoral College um, results. And it hasn't been updated in forever, and it's just a mess. Our election system is just a one giant pile of mess. Women support direct elections, 60%. Men are divided as 48% support direct election with 45% opposed. White voters are divided as 54, uh, excuse me, 50% support it with 44% opposed. Black voters support it 71% with Hispanic voters supporting it 67%. Now notice that black voters support direct elections for the popular, based on the popular vote at 71%. You know why? It's because they've been disenfranchised for so many years. When people say, oh, my vote doesn't count, that very well may be true because of the electoral college, also because of the systemic oppression that America um, puts out into the universe every single day and that black people have to suffer through. So they've lived it right up front. They understand that the electoral college and the way the maps are drawn are just crazy. And then they go into Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And interestingly, her uh, numbers were lower than I thought they would be. I mean, this is mainly, I mainly want to talk about the presidential election, but let's just pop into AOC for a minute. So she has a negative 23% favorability rating with 38% who haven't heard enough about her to form an opinion. Even so, so a lot of Republicans seem to have heard of her. And then weirdly, a lot of Democrats seem to not 
have heard of her. I find that very strange and I don't have an answer. All is definitely not A-OK -okay for AOC. Most voters either don't like the firebrand freshman congresswoman or don't know who she is, Malloy said. So here's where they get into the methodology, and this is all they have. They should really have a lot more on their methodology, which is how they conducted this poll, how they set it up, how they, uh, how their sample was, sample size was, how it's broken down. So they say from March 21st to 25th, Quinnipiac University surveyed 1,358 voters, so 1,358 voters nationwide with a margin of error of plus or minus 3.3 percentage points, including the design effect. The survey includes 559 Democrats and Democratic leaners with a margin of error of plus or minus 5.1 percentage points, including the design effect, and 582 Republicans and Republican leaners with a margin of error of plus or minus 5 percentage points, including the design effect. So they say um, they conduct gold standard surveys using random digit dialing with live interviewers calling landlines and cell phones. The Quinnipiac University poll conducts nationwide surveys and polls in more than a dozen states. Uh, which states are those? Tell me. Tell me, Quinnipiac, which states do you have? What ages do you have on your poll? Um, on nationwide and statewide elections as well as public policy issues. So again, I can put the link in the um, live chat to this crazy poll, but just know that when you read, let me pop back up on the screen here. When you read these headlines that say Biden's in the lead, don't give up hope because it matters how the poll was designed in the first place. It matters how people are reporting on the poll. So here you have a situation where you could have a really bad poll and then you could have really bad um, journalists pulling information specifically out of the poll to have the desire that they want to have. So the GOP is obviously going to grab that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez very low favor favor favorability rating and uh, they're gonna report on that and the establishment Democrats are going to report on the Biden being in the lead and Bernie fans are going to be kind of glad that he's in second place but hopefully Bernie fans realize that he is actually in first place and it's unfortunate that they don't poll about the um, candidates like Tulsi Gabbard but the reality is she's not polling uh, at a an amount to even show up in in these results so you know, if you're a Tulsi fan, time to canvas for her, really get the word out. And I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not telling you who to vote for, or who to canvas for. You can do that for anyone, any candidate you're into. You can, you can knock on doors for them. You can make calls for them. You can do that for Bernie. Um, you can, you can, they have these you can sign up to text for your candidate. You, can, you, like, you They have a list and then you text the people on the list who are interested in that candidate. Uh, yeah, there are tons of things. So go to your, your favorite candidate's website and look at the volunteer opportunities because many hands truly make light work and miracles do happen. Whoever thought that Donald Trump would win, not that that's a miracle, <laughs> but um, it's kind of like the opposite of a miracle, but it was stunning nonetheless. So beware of polls beware of headlines that talk about polls and vote for who you want to vote for fight for who you want to fight for